want to bring in third world populations to drive down wages and create political anarchy. That is Tower of Babel. We're all fighting with each other so they can rule over us. But the fact is, whether my criticism of immigrants is good or bad, I have free speech and you shouldn't be censoring it when it doesn't violate your terms of service. I know I keep hammering on that, but it's a big, big deal. Meanwhile, speaking of censorship, and I'm going right back to your calls. There's this article out of the Washington Examiner. Lawmakers, U.S. plan for Internet may be unconstitutional. President Obama's plan to internationalize, that's a quote, the Internet may be unconstitutional. Key members of Congress are saying the group of lawmakers sent a letter to the Government Accountability Office last week saying the plan to relinquish oversight of Internet domain name functions to a global multi-stakeholder body raised questions about the administration's authority to transfer possession and control of critical components of the Internet's infrastructure to a third party. Yeah, the U.S. built it, paid for it. It's working fine. It's global. Why give it to the U.N.? Because they're going to put it under U.N. regulations, taxes, and censorship. We had articles yesterday about this U.N. summit with the feminist groups saying, any criticism by the patriarchy will be bad. The letter was signed by the chairman of both congressional judiciary committees, Senator Chuck Grassley and Bob Goodlatte. I pronounced that right. Presidential candidate Senator Ted Cruz, Daryl Issa, and others. The lawmakers point out the Constitution says Congress has the exclusive power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations representing and respecting the authority, the territory, and other property belonging to the United States. Yeah, but the Constitution says a lot of other stuff, too, that the central government, the, the executive branch, the bureaucracy has been completely trampling into the dirt. Coming up, court upholds judgment against Monsanto, looming catastrophe from diseased rates. Billionaire warns of danger ahead. We're going to be getting into all of that. Some of the news up on InfoWars.com as well. And I'm researching the so-called tax cuts of Donald Trump deeply. I mean, I've read what he said. I've read what he claims. I'm trying to compare it to the law, current tax structures. But I think it's some of the most aggressive tax cuts I've heard of in a long time. In a cursory research, a cursory uh, view of it, I think it's a great idea. I'm not criticizing one of our writers, Kurt Nemo. I don't really control what Kurt says or does. I don't really read what he writes first before he puts it out because I know he's a smart guy. I respect him. I probably agree with 95% of his views. And so my writers are not slaves uh, to InfoWars. I review them. I think they're good people. I think they care about the truth. I think they have interesting perspectives. And so then I let them write what they want. But I read this article yesterday and I thought, well, what is this? Millions of Americans will realize little or no benefit from Donald Trump's tax plan. Political class will never admit taxation is theft. So I guess instead of going with all the other headlines that Donald Trump wanted massive cuts, Kurt went with kind of a catchy thing. And the more I read his article and the more I read actually what they're doing, I guess he's got a point. The income tax is unconstitutional. The income tax wasn't around until 1913 with the Federal Reserve enactment. Most Americans were exempt from it till the 50s. We built the country without it. We had 10% growth rates a year before it. Now, on average, about 5% growth rates. It's not good. It's selectively enforced. And I get Kurt's point. Because when you read it, the upper middle class doesn't get any tax cuts. Presidential frontrunner Donald Trump releases details of his tax plan. If you want to get the economy going, get the middle class a tax cut, too. The plan posted on Trump's Make America Great site is billed as a way to let people keep more money in their pockets and increase after tax wages. Many Americans, however, will realize a significant gain. The plan is designed to primarily benefit the poor, the lower middle class, and corporations. Well, that's fine. I'll take whatever I can get. If you are single and earn less than $25,000 a year or married and jointly earn less than 50000 you will not owe any income tax, the plan states. Well, that's fabulous. 
Because, I mean, even if I'm not in a $50,000 tax bracket, that's going to stir the economy up, create more investment, more saving to take huge taxes off folks making 50 grand a year. But the average person making 50 grand a year right now is paying something like 25%. That'd be zero, folks. That'd be huge. Trump claims the plan removes nearly 75 million households, over 50% from the income tax rolls, and will simplify income tax for all Americans. For individuals earning between 50000 and 150000 the tax rate will be 20%. That's beautiful. A reduction of approximately 5%, although this varies to a certain degree under the current arcane tax structure. Well, yeah, here's the problem. They've gotten rid of all the loopholes. And they're not loopholes. If this company or this corporation buys equipment, it's counted as my property and I'm going to pay taxes on it. And then that stifles growth, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to read the rest of it. I mean, I see Kurt's point. It's kind of a winding Byzantine article. But how about Donald Trump's bold tax plan doesn't go far enough? How about that? Maybe it's a good article because it's got me thinking. It's given me a headache. Because I want to cut taxes, but I get the point that we need to really just get rid of the income tax entirely. But then if they do a national sales tax, they're going to have federal tax police out roaming around, cracking down on every <coughs> clandestine black market under the table situation that we really just call swap meets, farmers markets, and stuff like that. Let's go to your phone calls right now. Sebastian in Colorado, you're on the year worldwide. Go ahead. Yes. Um, good to hear from you, Alex. I just wanted to ask about um, the globalists. In particular, they have access to military technology that's far beyond advanced, beyond anything that, that modern, excuse me, the modern civilian is aware of. So how are we um, to protect ourselves and prepare ourselves if they decide to use any of these advanced technologies against us, such as maybe vibrational harmonic type devices right. that can affect our emotions or something like that. Sure. DARPA admitted it's got to be like 18 years ago in the Toronto papers, but also in the Baltimore Sun, that they are testing, based on cell phone technology, waves to, quote, calm the public. And it was, I guess, a test article to see what response uh, them openly admitting that would have. And we've had Dr. Nick Bagach on a lot to talk about some of the different electronic warfare systems that are out there before the globalists can use things like this really wide scale they've got to get centralized control over everything and they've got to get full control over scientific research which they don't have completely yet before they can move ahead with such bold moves they certainly have been testing things like that i mean here's an example of trojan horse stuff hiding in plain view vw now um audi other companies are coming out saying, yeah, we have similar similar fraud systems in our emissions testing. So that does show how big, bold things can go on for quite a while. And undoubtedly, there is a lot of testing going on. But uh, I don't think we can become intimidated, 7.5 billion humans, by different forms of technologies. Because a lot of that stuff's going to blow back on the establishment themselves. You know, the dumbing down of the public is also blowing back on the establishment. Uh, so the best laid plans of mice and men often go astray is what I'm getting at. But, uh, yes, we're not in Kansas anymore, and there is a lot of advanced technology. But a lot of it is not theoretical. It, a lot of it's been developed and fielded. But still, it's not widespread in its usage. And before they roll out with widespread, they'll start admitting a lot of it in the news. Like, oh, we are doing some geoengineering to save the Earth. Oh, we do add to some of the jet fuel aluminum dioxide. Oh, we are weather modifying for the children. And then you know it's really getting ready to gear up once they start leaking it and testing it and preparing the public. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, also, I just want to say really briefly that me and my wife uh, love it when you get mad on your show. Not, not Pray not to the ill of your health, but we think that it's great. We should all be this upset. Well, you and your wife are awesome. God bless you, brother. Yeah, but then when I get mad, I got a big crick in the back of my neck, and I want to blow up, and it's not healthy. But, I mean, you focus on this stuff as much as I do.
it's very healthy to be exposing it so we're doing good work but getting down in it and having to focus on it and research it it's just so ridiculous what they've gotten away with i mean it's but that's the secret it's so big it's so crazy therein lies the secret Alex Jones here, back live. Thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday Worldwide Edition. I will continue with your phone calls. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. Then I'm going to get more into a big stack of economic news, uh, more on the attempts to regulate and censor the Internet. I mean, really, what we've got going for us is that it's all out in the open now, but we also have that against us because... If the public isn't warned or explained to how this is a bad idea, they may take all the things that are happening because it's calmly being done as no big deal and accept them. Like, oh, yeah, in Europe, you're arrested if you criticize open borders. Oh, yeah, in Europe, you can't criticize the government now. Oh, yeah, in England, you have no free speech. Oh, yeah, in America, you have no free speech. Yeah, there's a police lockdown because somebody had a rebel flag on their backpack, and the news just reports it with a straight face. This is the hysteria of a totalitarian system with just a Pavlovian, dumbed-down public where they ring the bell and the public basically just starts cowering in fear of all the false threats while just merrily marching by the graveyard, whistling past it, as our country's future is being prepared to enter the grave. They are digging the hole right now. All our power, all our infrastructure, what we built, what we made, what we did, our intellectual property, the Internet, our industry, our coal, our resources, our children, our military, everything is being trashed right now. And America is being put on trial worldwide for all its crimes, but we're not being told. We're kept in this bubble as Putin is made the leader of the world. And I'll tell you, I'm not an idiot. I know our elite is more organized, more evil, more out of control. I don't think Putin is playing a part in all of this and does not want the United States to be destroyed. But nevertheless... Putin is being set up by the very globalists in Europe that run this country at one level to be the savior so he can be brought down as well. Because the globalists want to bring down every nation state standing, every family, every private company, every sole proprietorship. Everybody's got to learn to hit their knees and not just hit their knees out of fear, hit their knees out of total subservience and dependence on this one world government system. Forbes three years ago asked the question, why is there a war on lemonade stands, farmers markets, and swap meets? $15 million fines on garage sales. That's a Fox News headline. Under federal regulations, they haven't implemented yet, but they're starting to. What's that about? The ultimate crime in the future, the ultimate crime, will be defending yourself physically, defending yourself legally, or selling or trading produce or fuel or services to anyone. Homeland Security is set up where you're not going to get a job unless the TSA authorizes it. They're going to be on every street corner. I told you 14 years ago of this. Now you see it at the pub's visit. P Pennsylvania, you name it. It's a total plan. Domestic controls. The TSA announced with the IRS last year that they didn't want any Americans being able to get out of the United States with even $1,000 cash. And then they went further. They said outside of law until Congress called them in finally. They said if the IRS has even opened a private investigation of even a form you didn't fill out, with somebody you had to do work for you. The, in their filing, they said anything, including clerical errors or IRS questions or IRS investigations, not indictments, not grand juries, for any reason they, that you would not be allowed to leave the United States. And then they went further. They said, you know what? We don't want you to be able to get on a plane. 
or International Park. And we're going to check IDs for the next.